But we begin with ongoing security precautions across Israel after a high-profile arrest of the head of Palestinian Islamic Jihad in the West Bank overnight. The IDF conducting a raid in the city of Jenin to arrest Bessem Saadi, the head of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and his son-in-law, Ashraf al jade Now, during the raid, a 17-year-old Palestinian militant also killed by Israeli forces. But during that as well, operations still ongoing in parts of the West Bank in response, the Gaza-based Islamic Jihad announcing in a statement that it was declaring a state of alertness and raising its fighters' readiness following the statement of Saudi. The Israeli military ordering, ordering the closure of several highways across Israel. For more on this now, let's bring in Rafael Yerushalmi. He is a former senior intelligence officer from the IDF joining me live in studio. Good morning to you. Just yesterday I spoke with our defense correspondent. We talked about 40 raids happening across the West Bank just the night before. And these raids, they're not always accomplishing what it is they need to. But this time they got a person. He's the head of Islamic Jihad. But he's a person who's been arrested and released multiple times. So what is different now? What's different now is the political will to have a large-scale operation and maybe not once and for all, but at least for once uh, to have a very uh, long ongoing uh, operation until we are make sure that we have dismantled the main terrorist cells operating in Judea and Samaria. Uh, this last night arrest is the arrest of one of the highest ranking so far uh, terrorists. Uh, the problem was until now that a lot of people were arrested, a lot of houses were searched, a lot of hangars were uh, open with uh, uh, weapons, uh, but nobody of really importance had been arrested. Uh, what was lacking in that operation is to uh, take it to a higher level uh, to reach uh, the leadership. So this is one of the main uh, person that was arrested now. Uh, the problem is, and we're seeing it today, uh, the reaction now of the terrorist factions, because when you touch uh, uh, just the normal soldiers on the ground, uh, the terrorist factions do not really react. Now they're going to have to react because we're speaking of a leader, a very important leader. He was uh, a part of the re uh, uh, restrengthening of the Islamic Jihad on the West Bank. Uh, he is a very radical person, he has a lot of followers, so it might be that something might come from Gaza. Uh, maybe even uh, the, the IDF is uh, uh, fearing even uh, uh, some missiles being fired at the south of Israel. Uh, today there is a state of alert in the south. Uh, trains between Ashkelon and Netivot are not functioning. Some roads have been closed. There are checkpoints all over the place uh, in case some terrorists would infiltrate from Gaza into Israel. So there is a kind of state of alert uh, with also an intense uh, dialogue through the Egyptians with the Hamas, asking the Hamas to make sure the Islamic Jihad stays put and holding the Hamas responsible would the Islamic Jihad uh, act. Um, we're just hearing some news that Prime Minister Yair Lapid is now this morning going to go into security briefings for ongoing security measures. But what can really be done to Hamas if Islamic Jihad chooses to respond? If Hamas is hands off here and Islamic Jihad is the one emanating with a retaliatory response from the Gaza Strip, what else can we see happen there? Well, we have a precedent. Uh, a couple of years ago, we eliminated a high ranking. Uh, Hamas uh, operative in Gaza with a drone strike and then we had to do the, op the operation black belt meaning we had to do some preventive strikes and uh, uh, threaten other leaders of the Hamas so in this case it's the same we can threaten other leaders of the Islamic Jihad in Gaza tell them if you don't stay put we will strike you as well or we will attack so we really were in a spot, it is, it is very serious. I mean, the Prime Minister is actually holding a meeting because of this uh, uh, very serious situation. Uh, it's very explosive. Uh, we are still hoping to, to cool down the Islamic Jihad. But uh, as usual, we are more proactive, uh, sorry, we are more reactive than proactive. It is really in the hands of the Hamas and Islamic Jihad. They will decide to shoot or not to shoot uh, missiles at Israel. We, we don't really have any uh, preventive measures that can stop that. Well, this is all happening from the Gaza Strip. But what about in the West Bank, where he was taken from? Do we know anything about how Islamic Jihad will choose to respond there? Do we know anything 
We've also been reporting here at I-24 News that the several factions throughout the West Bank, the several different militant factions, are almost forming together in a nightmare scenario for the IDF, where they are creating an army almost of all of their different groups. Could we expect to see any sort of retaliation from the West Bank? Of course, and uh, that's why this arrest is very important, because uh, uh, this leader was one of the most important in cementing uh, the collaboration between the different factions. This collaboration will not work and it will not last. It, they, they've tried many times before to unite. Uh, there are too many differences of opinions of how, how to operate, ideological opinions, even on their religious belief. They have different uh, ways of uh, expressing their faith. So it doesn't really last long, this kind of collaboration between those factions, especially that now they are all preparing the war that's going to be between them, which is the war of succession to Abu Mazen. Abu Mazen, sooner or later, will uh, his health, or, or he might even die, then there will be a chaos uh, in the West Bank. Uh, to, for, to see who is going to replace him. The Hamas seems to be the favorite. The Hamas is placing its hope as replacing uh, the PLO yes. as the ruler of mm -hmm. uh, the Palestinian people. I'm not so sure they will prevail. Inside mm -hmm. the PLO, there are many factions, uh, also diverse factions fighting mm -hmm. uh, amongst themselves. So we're far, far from a unity. The only unity there is now is a tactical unity of the moment because the IDF is attacking them all together. Yes, Raphael Yerushalmi, a former senior intelligence officer in the Israeli Defense Forces. Thank you. Let's now bring in I-24 News Middle East correspondent Alec Pollard at the Zakim Junction near the Gaza border for us. Alec, there's a lot of road closures, train closures and precautions this morning. What else do we know? Right, Hamda, so it's quite rare to see some of these roads that are used by civilians that are not right on the border being shut down uh, after a security assessment where the intelligence and the IDF came to the conclusion that there is the possibility that Palestinian Islamic Jihad will try a revenge attack after uh, the arrest of one of their senior speakers in the West Bank, a revenge attack that could look like sniper fire or anti-tank fire against civilian vehicles over here. And that's why we can see that this juncture here is shot. There's the police. There are the IDF. This road, if you drive less than 10 minutes down that road, you get to the Erez border crossing, which is at the northern tip of the Gaza Strip. And if you were to turn left and then right, you would go down the eastern part of the Gaza Strip, that road where there are a lot of communities, the Rot, a major town and other communities along the border, that road and all the junctions there are shut as well. And this is causing quite a bit of a disruption for many of the people who live in this area. Let's uh, listen to uh, one uh, young man who was driving along this road and had to reroute his drive, what he had to say earlier. It's not a normal situation. It's really unusual. I've lived here all my life. There have been some unpleasant situations here, but most of the time it doesn't go this far. Right, so uh, we heard there what he had to say, and um, this is, again, not something that usually happens. There is often a threat of some type of rocket fire from the Strip or other uh, potential attacks, but to shut down uh, the roads and not just um, not have, for example, IDF vehicles driving along the border or warnings for those farmers in those border communities, but to take this kind of step is uh, something that is quite unusual and shows uh, a relatively high level of threat from the Gaza Strip and specifically from the organization there, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. I-24 News Middle East correspondent Alec Pollard live for us at Zakim Junction near the Gaza border. Thank you.